What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we are gonna be finishing out the chapter of 2 Samuel chapter seven. We're gonna be reading from 17 to the end of the chapter, and we're gonna be discussing how many times that you have been blessed by God through your family, your friends, your job, and everything that you do, your struggles, your spirit, your spiritual walk with God, and you sit back and you ask yourself, or you go into prayer, and you say, God, what did I do to deserve this? How can you be so loving? How can you take care of me like this? You know that you don't deserve it, but it's his promise. It's his blessings. It's because you are a blessing to others, but you can't help but to feel that you don't deserve it and that you how much and you go to him in prayer and you say, thank you. You say, I love you, God. I'm so happy that you're that I'm following you. Or you even say, please, Lord, if I ever fall away, bring me back. Show me a way back. Don't let me stray too far from you that I may get lost. Give me a sign, speak to me, yell at me, do whatever you need to, but let me never fall away. How many times have we prayed that prayer? And I have definitely prayed that prayer. I get emotional about it because I know that I have made that prayer. And we are going to see that today in these final verses. We're going to explore this and we're going to see how David showed his love and how he went to God humbly and was dismayed by all the blessings in his life, how it overflowed and it carried on from generation to generation. We're going to see that. We're going to go through that. This is going to be a lot of reading, so I'm going to open up my notes and I'm going to let you guys see my notes as I go through it. And we're going to go through each verse to see all of God's promises and blessings that he has for us and that he has passed on to us. Without further ado, let's get right into this video. When God gives you that peace, you will rest in his security, his protection, his comfort, his love. We'll be starting at verse 17 and we'll read to the end of the chapter in 2 Samuel chapter 7. So Nathan went back to David and told him everything the Lord had said in this vision. Verse 18, then King David went in and sat before the Lord and prayed, who am I, O sovereign Lord? What is my family that you have brought me this far? And now, sovereign Lord, in addition to everything else, you speak of giving your servant a lasting dynasty. Do you deal with everyone this way, O sovereign Lord? What more can I, what more can I say to you? You know what your servant is, re is really like, sovereign Lord. Because of your promise and according to your will, you you have done all these great things and have been and have made me known to your servant. How great are you, O sovereign Lord? There is no one like you. We have never even heard of another God like you. What other nation on earth is like your, your people Israel? What other nation, O God, have you redeemed from slavery to your own people? You have made a great name for yourself when you redeemed your people from Egypt. You performed awesome miracles and drove out the nations and gods that stood in their way. You made Israel your very own people forever, and you, O oh Lord, became their God. And now, O oh Lord God, I am your servant. Do as you have promised concerning me and my family. Confirm it as a promise that will last forever. And may your name be honored forever, so that everyone will say, The Lord of heaven's army is God over Israel. And many the house, and may the house of your servant David continue before you forever. O oh Lord of heaven's army, God of Israel, I have been bold enough to pray this prayer to you because you have revealed all this to your servants, saying, I will build a house for you, a dynasty of kings, for you are God, a sovereign Lord. Your words are truth, and you have promised these good things to your servant. And now may it please you to, be, to bless the house of your servant so that it may continue forever before you, for you have spoken. And when you grant a blessing to your servant, a sovereign Lord, it is an eternal blessing. That is God's holy word. If we go to verse 11 to 17, we start to see the blessing and promises of God to be fulfilled after David's death. Promises that was predicting and pointing to both Solomon, King Solomon, 
in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. What we'll see is a house, a dynasty for David, the promising and blessing. Let me get you over to my notes so you can see it and so you can write down these Bible verses and you could be able to, to identify them. So now you see what I see. We see a seed, an offering raised up by God himself. We see that in Genesis chapter 15, verse five. Then the Lord took Abraham outside and said to him, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. In Matthew chapter one, verse one, he says, this is a record of, of, the, of the ancestors of Jesus, the Messiah, a descendant of David and of Abraham. We also see in Acts chapter two, verse 30, but he was a prophet and he knew God had promised with an oath that one of David's own descendants will sit on his throne. Also in Acts chapter 13, verse 23, and it is one of King David's descendants, Jesus, who is God's promised savior, of Israel. We also see the kingdom established by God himself. We see that in Luke chapter 1 verse 31 to 32 and it reads, "You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David." We also will see a spiritual house of worship. We see the promise and blessings as a spiritual house of worth worship in Zechariah chapter 6 verse 12. 12 to 13 and it reads tell him this is what the lord of heaven's armies says here is the man called the branch he will branch out from where he is and, and build the temple of the lord yes he will build the temple of the lord and then he will receive royal honor and will rule as king from his throne. He will also serve as priest from his throne, and there will be perfect harmony between his two roles. We also see in John chapter 2, verse 19 and 21, and it reads, All right, Jesus replied, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. What? They exclaimed. It has taken 46 years to build this temple and you can rebuild it in three days? But when Jesus said this temple, he meant his own body. We also see the promises and blessings of an eternal throne or kingdom. We see that in 1 Chronicles chapter 22 verses 6 to 10 and it reads, Then David sent his son Solomon and instructed him to build the temple for the Lord and the God of Israel. My son, I want, I wanted to, I wanted to build the temple to honor the name of the, of the Lord my God. David told him, but the Lord said to me, you have killed men, many men in the battle you have fought. And since you have shed so much blood in my sight, you will not be the one who build the temple to honor my name, but you will have a son who will be a man of peace. And I will give him peace with his enemies in all of the surrounding lands. His name will be Solomon. And I will give him peace and quiet to Israel during his reign. He is the one who will build a temple to honor my name. He will be my son and I will be his father. And I will secure hit the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. We see also in Matthew chapter 19, verse 28 to 29. And it reads, then Jesus replied, as you, I assure Assure you that when the world is made new and the Son of Man sits upon his glorious throne, you who have my followers will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up house and brother or or sister or father or mother or children or property for my sake, I will receive a hundred times as much in return and will inherit eternal life. We also see in Luke chapter 22 verses 29 to 30, it says, and just as, as my father has granted me a kingdom, I now grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you will sit on, on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. In John chapter 18, verse 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being hand over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. We also see a descendant who would be the son of God, which is Jesus. We see that in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, for a child is born born to, to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. We see in Mark chapter one, verse one, this is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the son of God. It began in Luke chapter one, verse 31 to 32. It reads, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you and you 
will name him Jesus, and he will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. We see in John chapter 20 verse 31. But there, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life for the, by the power of his name. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 5, it says, For God never said to any angel what he said to Jesus, You are my son. Today I have become your father. God also said, I will be his father and he will be my son. We also see the, the blessings and promises, a son who, who would be punished for sin. We see that in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 1 to 13, and it reads, Now King Solomon loved many foreign women. Beside Pharaoh's daughter, he married women from Moab, Ammon, Andam, Sidon, and Sudan, and from among the Hittites. The Lord had clearly instructed the people of Israel, you must not marry them because they will turn your, your hearts to their gods. Yes, Solomon, insisted on loving them anyway. He had 700 wives of the royal births and, and 300 concubines. And in fact, they did turn his heart away from the Lord. In Solomon's old age, they turned his heart to worship other gods instead of being completely faithful to the Lord, his God, as his father David had been. Solomon worshiped Ashtoreth, the goddess of of the Sidonians and the Moloch and detestable God of the Ammonites. In this way, Solomon did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He refused to follow the Lord completely as his father David had done. On the Mount of Olives in east of Jerusalem, he even built the pagan shrine in, in Chimamash and the detestable God of Moab and another in Moloch, the detestable God of Ammonites. Solomon built a shrine for all his foreign wives to use for burning incense and sacrificing to their gods. Verse 9, the Lord was very angry with Solomon for his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, and had appeared to him twice. He had warned Solomon specifically about worshiping other gods, but Solomon did not listen to the Lord's commands. So now the Lord said to him, since you have not kept my covenant and have dis disobeyed my decrees, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and give it to the one one of your servants. But for the sake of your father, David, I will not do this while you are still alive. I will take the kingdom away from your son. And even so, I will not take away the entire kingdom. I will let him be king of one tribe for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, my chosen city. In Romans chapter 5 verse 8, he says, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for, for us while we were still sinners. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8 to nine, it says, even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. In this way, God qualified him as a perfect high priest, and he had become the source of eternal salvation for all those who obey him. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, it says, he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right by his wounds you are healed so also we see the blessings and favor the blessings and promises inflicted by men in acts chapter 2 verse 22 to 23 we read people of israel listen god publicly endorsed jesus of nazarene by doing powerful miracles wonders and signs through him as you well know but god knew what would happen and his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed with the help of a lawless Gentiles. You nailed him to the cross and killed him. The blessings and promises, God's mercy and love for his son would be unfailing. We see that in Matthew chapter 12 verse 18. Look at my servant whom I have chosen. He is my beloved who please me, and I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. Also, in Matthew chapter 17 verse 5, but even as he spoke, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the, the cloud said, this is my dearly loved son, who brings me great joy. Listen to him. In Mark chapter 1 verse 11, he also says, and a voice from heaven said, you are my dear, dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. We see in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6, so we praise God for a glorious grace he had poured out on us who belongs to his dear son. We see in Colossians chapter 1 verse 18, for he has secured us from the kingdom of the darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. We also see in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 5, that is why Christ did not honor himself by assuming he could become high priest. No, 
he was chosen by God, who said to him, You are my son, and today I, I have become your father. And in conclusion of this, we also see the promise and blessings, the promises of eternal throne and kingdom repeated. We see this in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 to 9, and it reads, Out of the stump of the David's family will grow a shoot, yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root, and the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of the wit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by appearance, nor make a decision based on heresy. He will give justice to the poor. He will make fair decisions for the exploited. The earth will shake at the force of his word, and one breath from his mouth will destroy the wicked. He will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. In that day, the the wolf and the lamb will live up together. The leopard will die, will lie down with the baby goat. The calf and the, the yearling will be safe with the lion. And the little child will lead them all. The cow will gaze near the bear. The cub and the calf will lie together. The lion will eat hay like a cow. The baby will play safely near the hole of the cobra. Yes, a little child will, will put its hand in a nest of deadly snakes without harm. Nothing will hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For as the waters fill the sea, so the earth will be filled with people who know the Lord. We also see in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5, he says, For the time is coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous descendant from, da from King David's line. He will be a king who rules with wisdom. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. In Zechariah chapter 3, verse 8, listen to me on Joshua, the high priest, and all you other priests. You are symbols of things to come. Soon I am going to bring my servant, the branch, which is Jesus Christ. And finally, the revelation of God was reported to David word by word. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below so I can answer them. If you enjoyed this video, please press a like so the algorithm can pick up my video and can promote me to other people who needs this. Share this with anybody who may be helpful to help me to become a blessing in someone else's life that will help them and so that they can share in the promises and blessings of God who has promised us so much and who has already given us so much. I want to thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified when we go into 2 Samuel chapter 8. God bless you and God bless your family.